Hi. Today I'm rounding off my uh, look at three wines from uh, Bordegas Muga in Rioja with uh, a tasting of their Prado Enea Gran Reserva. So this is the 2015 vintage of that. Um, and um, what to say about Muga? Founded in, uh, 19, in the 1930s um, in the town of Haro in the northern part of the Rioja Alta region. Um, they have their vineyards in um, uh, the surrounding villages and having been around for close on a hundred years they've, they've been able to build up some, some really high quality um, vineyard holdings. Um, so those tend to be um, at altitudes of up to 550 metres and they tend to have um, soils that are a combination of limestone and clays, uh, maybe with some alluvial soils as well. Um, this particular wine, unsurprisingly, is, is made from some of the best of those vineyards. The villagers uh, mentioned uh, uh, Sajazaro, um, Solarigo, and um, Fonza Leche. Um, and these are villages that are at quite, hu quite high, high altitude. And, and that the result of this will be low yields, late harvesting, and good ripeness to the fruit. Um, the Winemaking at, at, at Muga is very traditional, although they, uh, through doing that, they tend to make quite a modern style of fruit forward sort of wine. So that they're, they're, um, they're employing these techniques very well. Um, there is a real emphasis on um, fermenting and aging in wood, uh, large old wood generally. Um, so this ferments using ambient yeasts in in um, in large oak um, f and um, I think there's a 16 day cuvation, so not a particularly long maceration for that. Um, the wine is put for aging into um, large cooperage again for, for 36 months, so three years, um, quite a long time. Um, it's then um, fined using just natural egg whites, so that might be an issue for, for any vegans um, to avoid the wine. Um, and then um, it ages again for another three years in bottle in their cellars just to allow it to harmonize and um, settle. Um, the wine is is a pretty typical Rioja blend, predominantly Tempranillo. It's slightly unusually for a Gran Reserva, there's a, there's a bit of Garnacha in there and then um, also Mausuelo and Graziano. Um, I mean everything is done to try and make sure that this is um, that the, the quality of the fruit is preserved into into the winery. I mean, for instance, all the picking goes on into, uh, it's all done by hand, naturally, um, but it all goes on into small uh, 20 kilogram cajets and that sort of thing. So the fruit reaches the winery in best condition. Um, and it's just a very careful uh, approach to winemaking. So, so let's see, let's see if the wine bears out what we're saying here. First of all, the colour. The colour is a medium, I guess it's a ruby red, but there's a quite a purple to the rim there. Uh, given that this is a, a 2015, that's quite quite a sort of a, um, still quite lively colour. And it, the colour is um, bright and, and lively. Um, and it's it, it's unsurprisingly at 14.5% alcohol, it, it's causing tears to fall and they are quite reasonably stained. You can see they're staining the glass there. Let's talk about the aromas. The aromas are quite developed, they're dusty, they're notes of forest floor, there's touches of leather in there, and there's an underlying richness, there's a sort of a, uh, a red tinge to a, a dark licorice concentration of the fruit there. Maybe there are smoky notes, um, it's a complex um, developed tertiary nose. Um, at the same time, there's that sort of red fruit note that's lifted there. It might be a sort of really bright red cherry or something like that. Um, so let's have a taste. There's a wonderful freshness there. There's really quite underlying pepperiness as well. Um, Lovely smooth, creamy texture, um, creamy, chocolatey. The tannins are very, very soft and silky. There's really 
no sort of grainy grip to it particularly. Um, it's high toned. It seems almost sort of there are lifted per lifted red fruit perfumes. There's an almost spiritiness to it. Um, it's lively. There's lots going on. I was talking about forest floor notes on the on the um, on the nose. There's not quite that developedness on the on the palate as of yet. That is still sort of quite bright, juicy, juicy. A red cherry, raspberry, those kinds of red fruits in there, with a darker black fruit core, black plum, bullis stems, and those sorts of, sorts of things. That actually kicks in near the finish. There's a spicy note on the finish. The finish is perhaps a little closed. I mean, as I say, the alcohol is 14.5%, so that's quite rich. The The body is not huge. I mean, this is medium to full body, but it's it's not a vast wine. Um, and the flavours are reasonably, last reasonably well, but I would expect them to evolve with time. This is a wine that you would pay the equivalent of about $85 US. X-Tax is our um, global average price. So... Um, not necessarily a cheap wine. Um, a wine that's already starting to show quite a bit of maturity probably has the ability to age for another 10 years or so, particularly the um, um, the weight of fruit, not necessarily the weight of tannin, and in combination with the freshness of the acidity, um, I think that's, that's a wine that's got quite a bit of life with it there. But yes, really um, quite a modern, quite fruit-forward style of Grand Reserve. There's not the sort of the um, dried note that you can get with with some lighter um, bodied wines in this style. So yes, thank you for joining us. Do watch again if you've enjoyed the video and um, bye for now.